Hi, uh, the purpose of this video is uh, for us uh, to continue uh, on converging lens, also to help uh, students, the 3E students who missed out the second bridging uh, day lesson. So uh, we continue from converging lens notes. So this this was the page on this was the page where we ended um where we ended the uh, to learn more about the different types of images formed by a converging lens that a converging lens can be real or virtual can be real or virtual upright or inverted upright or inverted it can also be magnified, same size and diminished. We need to have all these terms ready to describe the type of image form because this topic is about finding out the image when an object is given in front of a lens. So after you get the image, you must be able to use these terms to describe the image and to help us understand better or to help you uh, recall a certain uh, characteristic uh, better. I have formed this um, uh, this method here. IR. If you see an image inverted, I inverted, the image is also real. Can be formed on screen. Or UV, upright U for upright. If you see an image upright. It is also virtual, cannot be formed on screen. So on day two lesson, we started with a uh, hands-on activity. Student, uh, student held onto a lens and the object was a window. So I can't show it here, but I, I want to show you this uh, uh, YouTube uh, screen. This YouTube uh, screen here. Um, I will send you the I will send the link. You can watch this on your own. Uh, but you can see this candle is the object to give you an idea of the image form. This candle is the object at some distance in front, at some distance in front of the lens. This lens is a converging lens. That means fatter at the center, sharper at the edge. So the the object is in front of the lens. This lens is placed on the holder, a wooden holder. Behind here is a screen. We can see that the object, after the light from the object, go through the image. It forms an image on the screen. So this image caught on the screen is a real image because it is caught on this white color screen. And look at the image form here. It is inverted upside down. The flame is below, whereas the body of the candle is here. Huh? Okay, so this is an example of a example, okay. of a image, a, a real inverted image form on the screen due to the converging lens. Right now, let's uh, continue uh, with the lesson. Huh? Back to your notes. So. After the day one describing, where we ended at describing the image, the terms used to describe the image, uh, day two, I started with this slide. Okay, so you can follow from here. Whoever missed the day two lesson, you can follow from here that uh, there are three principal rays. There are three principal rays that we always go for, three important rays that we go for to draw in a ray diagram to allocate where the image is formed. So let's understand the rule of this three principal ray. So first ray, for any light ray that comes to the center of the lens, uh, the optical center of the lens, it will go straight through. It will go straight through without bending. Okay? Any ray that cuts C will go straight through. So if I have a light that come this way, come this way, and uh, and and crossing uh, optical center at C, then it will go straight through like that, straight through without bending, uh, if the light come this way, or the light go this way, so long it 
comes to center C, it will go straight through without bending. That's the rule number one for the first principal ray. The second principal ray is when light ray go parallel to the principal axis. Remember, this line is the principal axis. Uh, the XY, uh, this XY line at the center is called the principal axis. Any light ray that's parallel will cut through the focal point on the other side. For every converging lens given, because there are two, two round surfaces, two curved surfaces, there's always a focal point on each side, one on the right side, one on the left side. Okay, so for what? So that if the parallel beam comes from this side, come from this side, huh? right side, then it will cut through the focal point F2. Okay, so the second rule, the rule for the second principal ray is such that any ray that comes parallel to the principal axis converge to focal point F. Now the third one is opposite to number two. That means if the ray already cut through F before it comes to the lens, it already cut through the F before it comes to, to the lens, then it's the opposite of this. Like cut through F, then it becomes parallel. So number three is it becomes parallel. Okay, so that's rule number three. Any ray that cuts focal point F before meeting the lens emerge parallel to the principal axis. So at any one time, when a ray diagram is given, you can use two of them, either two. You can either use one and two, or one and three, or two and three. Any two of the ray can allow you to find where the image is formed. We shall practice in the next page. Okay, and we normally use, normally with the student, I start with ray one and two. Okay, let's go to page the next page. So in a given question, in a given question, this is a typical example of an O-level question. A lens, the symbol of a lens is two arrow, one arrow on top, one arrow below, label L. So this is a symbol of a converging lens. Then there are two focal points here, one on the right, one on the left. Normally the focal length are the same. The focal length, right hand side and left hand side, are normally the same okay it's about 2 cm about 2 cm uh, i have the class to measure this some of them tell me it's 1.9 so it's about 1.9 or 2 cm all right in this case here remember focal length is measured from the optical center c to f okay then the object is placed at certain distance you can see that this distant object distance is this object distance is further then the focal length is longer than the focal length of the lens. So let's see, uh, in this case here, you are supposed to, given an object, you are supposed to find where the image is. Just draw two rays. Draw two rays to find where the image is, then describe the type of image. One, two, three. The three characteristics of the image that you draw. Okay, so number one. First ray is always drawn from the tip of the arrowhead of the object here to the center of the lens. Remember the rule is such that the first principal ray which cut through the center of the lens will go straight through. So there's, there's no bending. Okay. Then the second principal ray, which I draw the blue line here, is the one parallel to the principal axis. Remember the rule says parallel beam must cut through F on the other side. Since it's, it comes from the left side, it will cut through the F on the right side. So there you go. So you form an intersection here, intersection. The purpose of this intersection is to help you draw your image. Now it should be the same as the left hand side. You see the intersection of the red and the blue line on this side is where you start to draw the arrow head. So on this side is also where you start to draw the arrow head of the image. Then you look at the left hand side of the object. After the arrow hit, the body of the object is drawn vertically straight to the principal axis. So the image body will also be vertically straight to the principal axis. So the image looks like this, this purple one. And we always label the image I. Okay, now this, this is how you have completed the ray diagram. 
to score like two or three marks. Okay, two ray. And remember each ray before and after the lens must come with an arrow. See my blue ray, arrow before the lens, arrow after the lens. The red ray also, arrow before the lens, arrow after the lens. It must come with arrow. No arrow, one mark is minus. Now, if you look at the image form here, the image form here, you can very quickly identify the three characteristics, list down the three characteristics of the image form. Okay, three characteristics. Number one, can you see that it is inverted? So inverted, yeah. Remember IR? Whoever is inverted, whichever image is inverted is also real. So it is real. It can be formed on screen. It can be captured on screen. Number three, compare the size, the height. The size of the image is smaller than the size of the object. So it is, the English word used is, either you say become smaller or diminish. One word, diminished. Okay? Now, in the class, I also tell the student, measure the focal length, which you can measure from here, center to F. Uh, if question asks you measure the image distance, it will be from the center here to the image. I repeat, uh, if you are told to measure image distance, then you will measure from the center to the image. So every distance is measured from the center of the lens. Nowhere else. Okay? So that's how you measure. I didn't tell the class to measure this image distance because everyone will give me different answer. It depends on how accurate you draw these two rays. Okay, it depends on how accurate you draw these two rays. It must cut through the center exactly, and this part must really be parallel, same height as the object, must be parallel from the tip of the arrowhead. Okay, and really cut through point F. So it depends on how accurate before you can uh, form the image. So different people will give me different image distance reading. All right, so the answer for image distance normally will be a range of acceptable answer. Now, I didn't tell the class to find magnification power. You can cross this out. Magnification power is not needed in your syllabus. Okay? Then, after that, I had the class to use this same method to draw for second diagram. Now, if you compare second diagram with the first diagram, you notice the object now is moved nearer to the, object, uh, to the lens. Okay? The object is moved from here further to nearer now. Now, just by moving object nearer, the image form will be different. So you can try the same method to draw on this, uh, on this second diagram. Okay, I let you pause and you draw this yourself. Then I, I will go on uh, to show you the answer. But meanwhile, uh, here's something. If O-Level give you a third ray, because just now we learned a third ray, right? We learned the third ray. Um, if O level give you a third ray, incomplete one, say this one, like that, the green one. Huh? If they didn't give you, then never mind. You just need this blue and the red one will do. You normally need only these two to form the image. But let's say there's a third one green given, incomplete, and ask you to complete this green color ray, this third one. How should you continue? Okay, remember the third principal ray. Any ray that cut through F before it reached the lens, will become parallel to the principal axis, parallel. You notice if I draw parallel, it will intersect at the exact, exact same point where the first two ray has intersect previously. So if, if you draw all the three ray accurately, all three will intersect at the same point where the image is formed. Okay, so any ray that come from the object at this point will end up meeting at the image at the same point if you draw them accurately. Okay, so uh, otherwise this green one is not needed. Okay, I give this green one is in case the O-Level give you an incomplete one and ask you to continue drawing this one. Then how do you continue? So then it becomes uh, like this. Okay, so meanwhile, let me remove the green one. All you need is the blue and the red one. Now you try this same method to draw for the second diagram. So I pause here and you continue. Let's say you pause it yourself, you draw this. Now let's uh, compare the result. Okay, 
let's compare the result uh, for second diagram. Uh, second diagram. So again, the method is to first from the tip of the arrow of the object, meet the center of the lens and go straight through. Then the second one, oh, remember the arrow before and after. Then the blue one parallel from the arrow head again and arrow. And where does it go? It should go, it should, by the rule, it should cut through the F focal point or the principal focus on the right hand side. Yes. Okay. Then now you notice the intersection is further and the image form is bigger this time. It's bigger. So compare, let's recall the three ways to describe the three characteristics to describe the image. First of all, is it upright or inverted? It is inverted, right? The arrow head is below compared to the object here. Since it is inverted, it is also real. But this time, compare the size. You compare the size, it has become bigger than the object. So the English term is magnified. Some students use enlarge, also can, doesn't matter. Now I'm going to pause here before I come to the third diagram. So I want to show you the applet. Okay, the applet here. Take a look at this applet. Now in, in real life, when you look at the, the ray from a point, uh, there are actually many rays, multiple rays. Some of them cut through the lens, go through the lens to form the image. Some of them doesn't. So we don't care about those that doesn't cut through. We only care about those that cut through the lens because those that go through the lens will form the image. So normally we look at the three principal ray that looks like this. Huh? Okay, the three principal ray. So I have two focal points, F1, F2, one on the right, one on the left, also known as principal focus. Okay, principal focus one, principal focus two. Now remember, just now the first example is the object is far away. Object is far away. The image is inverted and smaller, diminished, and it is nearer to the lens. The moment I bring nearer to the bring the object nearer to the lens, let's see what happened to the image. The image goes further away. It goes further away from the lens and become bigger. See, as, it, as I go nearer to the lens, the image goes further and further away and become bigger. Okay, become bigger. Imagine that the focal, the uh, converging lens can be as wide as from here to below. Lah. Okay, from here to all the way down. So the image size depends on where the object is. When the object is far away, the image is small and near, nearer to the lens. When the object is nearer to the lens, the image becomes further away from the lens and become bigger. Okay? Now, if I want to measure focal length, remember how I measure? I put it on here, center of the lens, to the focal, principal focus. So that is about uh, 80 cm in this case. 80 cm is the focal length for this diagram, the focal length. Image distance is up to 180, uh, 190, huh? 190 here. Okay, so that's the image distance. All right, then if you are told to measure the image size, then you measure the image size like this. Huh? The height of the image from 0 here to 140 cm. Okay, so that's how we measure them one by one. Okay, so uh, let me close this first. Okay, let me get back to your notes. Now the third diagram, let's try the third diagram on your own now. Okay, third diagram. This time you notice the object goes even nearer. Okay, the object goes even nearer to the lens. Goes even nearer. It's so near that it is within the focal length. So again, we draw the first ray. Okay, if I don't draw for you, uh, you try pause here and draw it yourself. Then you compare it with mine. Okay, now you would have drawn the first ray from the tip to where? To the center. So it goes like that. Okay, then the second, the blue one, parallel 
parallel, right? The second principal ray parallel. And then after that, where does it go? It goes to the focal point F on the right. Uh, this time we are stuck because these two rays doesn't intersect. If it doesn't intersect here, there's always for them to intersect on the other side. So how? You put your ruler here and project this ray straight backward like this. Okay, straight. Don't bend it. Just put the ruler along here and project this ray dotted backward. Reason why dotted? Because this time the image is going to be virtual. This ray here has no arrow. It's a virtual imaginary line now. You project it backward, there. Then the intersection now is on this side. And what you get is this image now. Image is also dotted. Okay? Now, this image form is, is it inverted or upright? Uh, remember the rule is this, huh? when you get the intersection, you have the arrow head. Yeah? When you have the intersection, you have the arrow head. Then the body of the arrow is always drawn vertically down to the principal axis. That's why you get a vertical image, uh, upright image. So this image is upright. Remember upright UV, ultraviolet U, also comes with virtual. Upright is always with virtual. So this image form is virtual. Okay. And thirdly, you compare the size, it is bigger than the object. This is a case of a magnified. Upright, virtual and magnified image. Please mark three star to this diagram. O level like to go for, like to ask students about this diagram. When object is Object distance is shorter than the focal length. That means object is within the focal length. This is the image you get. All right. This is the only diagram that gives you upright and virtual image. And the image is formed on the same side as the object. Unlike the previous two diagram, previous two diagram, oh, and unlike the previous these two diagram, image is both formed on the opposite side. This right hand side, opposite side of the object, okay? This one is formed on the left hand side, same side as the object. So this special case is mark three star. Uh, o level like to ask. Uh, this is the case of a magnifying glass. When you need to bring the magnifying glass very close to the object, which is very small, and you can't see the object, so that's why you bring the lens so near to the little insect or the little letters that you can't see on the newspaper. You bring the com uh, converging lens, the magnifying glass, very near to the object. Then you see the image, bigger image, deeper into the paper or deeper into the wall. Okay, so that's how it looks like. If I were to draw it, uh, if I were to draw it, it looks like this. It will look like this. Uh, this is the this will be the magnifying glass with the holder. This is the little insect that you are looking at the wall, okay? And then this is your eye. This is your eye. Looking at into the converging lens, you are holding on. You are holding on to the to the magnifying glass, okay? You're holding on to the magnifying glass to look at this small little insect here to and then this little insect become the magnified one for you to see even bigger like that. all right this is the image okay so this is a case of a magnifying glass and this case, please mark three star. Uh, because this question is asked quite often. I mean, this diagram is asked quite often in the O-level. All right. So allow me to uh, get this back again to my actual... Here. So let's... Uh, Ignore my picture for a while. Let's go to the this third diagram. That fourth diagram number four is a special case 
which is not so important, I actually tell the class to skip. But since it's in this video, I, I also just continue. Okay? Let's say you are given three beam, uh, three ray, three ray. This three ray make one beam, uh, one beam of light. But they are they are parallel to each other, but they are not parallel to the principal axis. Notice it's different from the rest. It is different from diagram one, two, and three because they are parallel to themselves, but they are not parallel to the beam. Now, which ray can you continue to draw first that you are very confident in drawing? It won't be the top one or the bottom one, right? It will be the first principal ray that go through the center because you know that one will go straight without bending. So it will go straight, the blue one, huh? okay, go straight. Notice it cut this focal, focal plane. Previously, we learned that this one, this, this dotted line that we draw here from point F is called the focal plane. When it cut through the focal plane, this point is where the image is formed. This point is where the image is formed. So all the other ray must take the cue and follow to this point where the image is formed. So the other two ray. So the first ray at the center guide you that the image will form here. The rest will also cut through this image here. So the image is formed at this point. That's the image. All right, image is formed here at the focal plane. Now this case is a very odd one. It, it is not important to you now. Just note that it can be one of the cases uh, uh, in this ray diagram. It is hardly asked. In fact, it, it was never asked in O-level so far. All right? For combined sign. So let's go on to the next one uh, where uh, Lorna, this one I would need to um, I, I would need to do this one, one step at a time with you again. This is a different type of question whereby Question asks you in the reverse way. Okay? It asks you in the reverse way. Basically, O level will either ask you <clears throat> will either ask you with an object and the lens given and the focal point F given. The three things given are huh? object, lens, and the focal point. Then they ask you draw two ray to find the image. Or they can give you uh, they can give you object and the image. Then ask you find these two things. Where the lens is, lo locate the lens and mark the focal point F. So this one becomes the reverse. Reverse question of the previous uh, three diagram that you draw in the one, two, three. So how do I do this kind of question? If you go back to this again, you notice that Whenever image and object is given, all you need to know where the lens is, all you need is this red color line, red one. The object hit, meet the image hit. When it cut through the principal axis, that is where the center of the lens must be, center of the lens. Then you draw this lens. Huh? Okay, so let's go for the very first one. I come back to this page now. You turn to your notes to this page, try drawing this. So the rule is this. First ray, uh, first ray to draw is this one. Top of the object to the bottom of the image. The object head and the image head must be connected by one ray. Then it cut through the principal axis at this point, right? So this is must be the optical center, the center of the lens. So if it's the center of the lens, you must draw the lens where this is really the center. Huh? where it is really the center. You cannot draw like that. If you draw like that, then here doesn't appear to be the center because down here is shorter, down here is longer. Uh, to make sure it's the center, it must look like this. Okay, so now it's at the center. I, I hope uh, my ray is accurate. Okay, huh? all right. Now next, you have settled, you have already done the first part, find the location of the lens. Now to find the focal point F or principal focus, another name for focal point F is called principal focus. You are to draw the parallel because the parallel beam 
will always help you, parallel beam will always help you find where the focal point F is. So, but there's no F to guide me now. Where should it go to? Go back to where we learn. You see the blue line always cut through F and come to the image head. It must intersect the red one to form the image. So this one, now, since I know where the image is, that is where the red line should intersect. The red line should intersect this blue line to form the image. So any ray that comes, since the image is formed there, then my red line should intersect the blue line at here. So where is my F now? The F is always found at the principal axis. So it's here. So that's the last step. And you score the two marks. One is for drawing the ray. Second mark is to is, is where you locate your point F correctly. So one mark, two mark. Then finding the lens is one mark of the ray, one mark on drawing the lens at the correct place. So this diagram can cost you four marks. It is that easy to score. Now try the same way to draw this one now. Try the same way to draw this. Okay? You would end up, you can pause this uh, video at this point and try drawing it yourself. Then now compare with my answer. Okay? So you should see something like this again. First ray. Right? Alright, did you draw that first ray in order to find the what? The center of the lens. Okay? Now to find point F, you must have the parallel line. And from the parallel line, you must draw it down to the image. Since image is formed already, everything go to the image. Alright? Then you see this intersection at the principal axis by the red line. And that is where you mark your focal point and you score the four marks. All right. Now, similarly for this case here, lens is given. Lens is given. You don't need to find the, where the lens is formed already. Now is to find where the principal focus is. Now, this is the case where I asked you to mark the three star. Remember this diagram? Okay. This diagram. Sorry. Okay. Huh? Remember this diagram? Uh, can you see uh, where, the, where the lens is? The center of the lens that comes from the object, this red line, it also comes from the tip of the arrow head of the image. Then to find, then where is the F? The F is found by the blue line. You must always draw, blue line is always the one parallel to the object. But after that, without the F, where should it go? Let's say without the F to guide you, how should this one go? When you project it straight, it must also again cut from the, it must come from the arrow head of the image. Come from the arrow head of the image. So that's the techniques if you were to answer question uh, backward from this. Okay? So again, lens is found already. Don't need, I don't need to draw this center one. Just drawing the center one, this one, slanted red color one, is to find the lens. But lens is given, so don't need. Now to find the F, I have to draw the parallel one. So I draw the parallel one, like this. After that, where should it go to? Right? Where should it go to? I don't have an F to guide me. Right? I don't have an F to guide me. So what will happen next is I that it must come from a projection behind. Projection. Let me see where the projection is from. Here. Okay? This is the projection from behind. So put your ruler here, project. It should project back from the arrowhead of the image and go straight through like this. Cut straight through. Okay, then you continue draw. Since the, you know, the principal axis is not long enough, now you just continue drawing the the black line. I'm trying to draw on screen with my free hand. 
you can use ruler. Now uh, mark this focal point F. This is my focal point F here. Okay? So last diagram. So that's all for this diagram. All you need is this. This two ray can already help you find F. But the, the third one, the last one, uh, the last one is a little bit more complicated because the lens is not given also. Right? The lens is not given. So let me go through the process. Again, you can attempt without seeing my answer first. You can pause the you can pause this video to draw this on your own first. See whether you got it or not. This time, uh, this last one is not given the lens. But you can refer back to this diagram again to see, to get the, the idea. You know, you can go back to this third diagram again to get the idea how you should be able to find the lens first. So, if you are ready, you can watch this video again, how this is found. So, to get the lens is always the first part where you have to draw the, the diagonal, the slanted line from the head of the object to the head of the image, right? So that is the very first one you draw, all right? Uh, you connect these two first, connect these two. You know, ultimately, the two heads must meet with a line. Then continue this blue one, put your ruler there and project it downward. Okay, project it downward, straight. Now you have this slanted line that cut the principal axis. That is the center of your lens. The rule is still the same as the previous two. Remember the previous two also? The slanted line that starts from the object head to the image head. That slanted line that cuts the principal axis is the center of the lens. There you go, same, same thing. The slanted line that starts from the object head that goes to the image head, the slanted line that cuts the principal axis, that's the center of the lens. So that is where we start. Then you draw the parallel one to find the F. You have settled the first part of the question. Huh? Second part now is to find the principal focus or the focal point. So now you draw the parallel. Whenever you want to find the focal point, you have to start with this parallel. Then after that, where does it go? There's no F to guide me, but there's image to guide me, this image head. So use this image head to guide you. Okay. Uh, wait, uh, my arrow is not, not very accurate. Okay, then continue project downward and you will see the intersection on the black principal, the, this principal axis here and that is your focal point F. Okay, this is your principal, principal focus of focal point F. There you go. All right. You notice at all time only the solid line has arrows. Dotted line has no arrow. So I have to remind you that uh, you draw dotted line at the wrong place, then you go again. Uh, everything is wrong. Okay? So let's go to the next diagram. Now this last part, I didn't go through with the class, but the whole class can try to follow this uh, last part here. It's also pretty important. The reason why I give a summary page this is the last page. The summary page for this topic is this diagram. Okay, this diagram. This diagram shows the, pro the progress of object from more than 2F. Okay, now you see the diagram has 2F. It means two times the focal length. Two times the focal length. Let's say if the focal length is 4CM, then here to here is 8CM. So this is another 4CM. Okay. Let's say this is 4cm, then here to here is another 4cm. This 2f, this means 2f. That means here to here is 8cm. So if this part here, there's an f, this part also is a 2f. 2f is never needed. It's not needed in the diagram one. But we use it as a, as a reference point to say that, hey, this object distance is so far away that it is longer than two times the focal length. Okay, this object distance is so far away is so far away from the lens 
that it is greater, the object distance is greater than the than two times the focal length, eh? greater than 2f. So when it is greater than 2f, so this, this summary page will give you a summary on how, uh, how what instrument use this converging lens to produce this kind of image. I give you an example first. Huh? So let's start with the first one. When the object distance is greater than 2f, again the two standard ray is to draw to be drawn this way. One slanted one, meet the center and go straight. The second one is parallel and it must cut through f. At all time we only use f. We never use the 2f. So 2f is not needed. It is used as a reference point only to tell the distant object, to tell about the distant object. Uh, object distance. Okay. Uh, I believe this two ray in your notes is already given. All you need to do now is to draw the image. Uh, draw the image I. Okay, image I. Now let's describe the image. It is small, it is inverted, real, and diminished. Right? This three. Inverted, real, and this diminished. So what is important in this page is about the instrument. You need to memorize the one instrument used that use this lens to produce this kind of image, inverted real and diminished. Okay, what kind of instruments use a converging lens to produce a smaller image? You use it on your handphone all the time. It is the camera. Camera will project the real object into a small image form on your screen so that you can save the picture. Huh? All right, so that's camera. All right, some people say I. I, yes, our eye, but our eye is not an instrument. That's why it, I cannot put eye as, as the use here. Okay? It's not an instrument. Camera is an instrument, our eye is not. But our eye, our eye is also producing this kind of image. Okay? Our organic eyes, you, lens in our eyes, produce this kind of image. Inverted, real, and diminished. <clears throat> now, the second. Now the object is moved nearer. Now the object distance is equal to 2f. Eh? My object now has moved from greater than 2f, now nearer to the lens at 2f. Can you see? It is now at 2f. If you note, note 2f, uh, it is a very special diagram. Whenever object is at 2f, 2 times the focal length, image form is also at 2 times the focal length. That means the object distance is equal to the image distance. Because the distance is the same, the ob image size will also be the same as the object size. And because of that, the image there, the image form is inverted real and same size. Please, to, please note, it is same size. Okay, same size as the object. Now, what kind of instrument would want to use a converging lens to produce same size? There is one very important one. Whenever you go and photostat notes, photostatting machine or photocopier, whatever object I put into the photostatting machine, it comes out the same. The size are the same. Unless you go and press the enlarge button and print it into a 3A paper, 3A size paper. Okay. Otherwise, photocopier always produce same size image as the object. That means in a photostatic machine, the lens is placed such a way that whenever you put the object inside, it is at 2f, 2 times the focal length. 2 times the focal length, 2f. So if your focal length is 4cm, your object should be placed at 8cm. When, uh, when it is 2 times, it is at 2 times 2f, 2 times the focal length away from your lens, the image will also be formed at 2f. And the size will be the same. Okay, can you please put two star to this diagram? Maybe I put here. Maybe I put here. Okay. Uh, put two star to this. Yeah. Uh, put two star to this, please. Uh, just to remind yourself, this is a special case and is gaining popularity in O level every now and then. O level every now and then like to give this in this scenario in MCQ as well as in a short question. Okay, this, this is one special one. Just take note. All right, 
Now the last one now, uh, last few. Okay. This time object is placed between F and 2F. Okay. Object placed between F and 2F. Now I believe the again the two ray is given to you. Even if not given, you should know how to draw, yeah? Okay. And slanted one, cut through center, go straight. Then the, the next principal ray parallel to the principal axis and it should cut through F or 2F. It should cut through F. We always use F only. Then you form a bigger image, real inverted, in, inverted real magnified. Now, what kind of instrument use a lens to project a bigger image than the size of the object? It is none other than our overhead projector or what we call OHP, overhead projector. Okay, OHP in short. All right. Now, this one is not needed because when object is at F, you notice that the two ray, both front and both in front and behind projected backward will forever be parallel to each other. They never meet. So no image is formed. No image is formed. Image at infinity. So this kind of diagram will never be given to you. I mean object at F will never be given to you. So no worry. But what if the object is within F now? See how we progress, huh? Our object distance. It started from greater than 2F. Then it comes nearer to 2F. Then after that, now is between F and 2F. Then finally, now come to lesser than F. Within focal length now. Within focal length. Again, this is one diagram that you remember just now when you draw. The special case I asked you, Mark 3 star. This is where the image does not meet i mean the, the the rays does not meet on the right hand side and you project backward to form your image okay you form your image now when you form your image here it becomes upright virtual and magnified and the lens that is used in this way to form this kind of image it is a magnifying glass now you notice from the first diagram to the last diagram the lens are all converging lens but they are used differently because the object is at, because of where the object is. They are, every lens here is a converging lens. There's none that is a diverging lens. All of them are converging lens, just that they are used for object at different places and therefore they are different instrument. They become different instrument. All right. So this special case also just take note and this is where the uh, lesson has ended. Okay, this is where the lesson has ended. Uh, also take note of this point. Yeah, also take note of this point. Uh, sorry, let me uh, very quickly browse this through. Okay. Uh, one last point. Just now when I show you the applet, as the object goes nearer to the lens, the real image, real image, huh? that means image on the right hand side, huh? will move further from the lens and the real image becomes bigger in size. This is just to capture the how image changes as your object comes nearer and nearer to the lens. But not including this last one. Huh? This last one is where the object becomes fall within the focal length. We are only talking about object that is not within the focal length but is going nearer to the lens. Then the real image form on the right hand side, the real image form on the right hand side here will go further and further away. And not just that, it becomes bigger also. Okay, so there's just this pattern that we see here that I need you to do. And from here, from this point, I want to cover two questions in your, in your worksheet. The rest of them, you do it as a holiday assignment. Okay, the rest, you do it as holiday assignment. Uh, let me talk about the the worksheet here the worksheet in the class we did this question in the class we have already done this one question five whereby we in the lesson one we said because because this two ray the original should go this way with a we recall uh, because why the answer is c because this is the only one that, that shows you that when the, originally the ray would have 
would have gone straight this way. I don't have a ruler, I can't draw straight. But because after it go through the lens, it has come nearer to each other. Although it looks, it is parallel, it has come nearer to each other. Therefore, C shows a converging lens, shows the correct converging lens. That's why the answer is C. Huh? Okay. Uh, those who miss lesson one will have a problem with this. If you have a problem, do come back to me. Now, uh, in class, in day two, we did this also. In day two, we have done question one. Okay, we've done question one. Remember, this was a diagram where I asked you to mark three star, the special case whereby image is formed on the left-hand side and is upright and virtual. Okay, uh, now the question asks, which point is the principal focus? Principal focus also means focal point. Focal point, the capital letter F. Okay, which one, which point shows the principal focus? Uh, the answer, you can pause here and try it yourself first. Which, which is the answer? Is it A? A is wrong, right? A shows the image distance. B shows the object distance. C shows the optical center, also wrong. Even by cancelling one by one, you know in the end the answer is D, this one. Uh, one way to recognize this is to find focal point F, it always comes from the parallel blue beam, the parallel one, this, this one. Then where the parallel one cuts the principal axis, that is my F. Okay, so answer is D. If you come across this word erect, huh? erect, okay, or erect here, the word erect also means upright, huh? upright. Okay? An American language used in the past, huh? in O level. To erect a building means to build a building upright. Okay? Now, uh, we also did, you flip one page behind, you will see this, this question. Uh, this one don't need. Okay? You will see this question. Okay? This question is one level higher. We did this in the class also. Now you can try this. You can pause here and try this yourself. See whether you can get this answer on your own. Now this is this question is one level higher because this diagram is something that we have not tried in the notes so far. But you use the logic reasoning, the logical reasoning and see whether you get this yourself. Okay? So what kind of image will you get? And where is the focal length? Okay, you have to answer this question. You have to find out what kind of image you get first. What kind of image? So based on these two ray, can these two ray merge? It doesn't intersect on the right hand side. That means you can't get a inverted real image. Real image is not there anymore. When you cannot get an image on the right hand side by intersect setting the two ray on the right hand side. Remember what you can do is put your ruler back on this ray and project backward. You project backward. If you project backward now, you will see this. If you project the ray backward. Let me try to draw this as accurate as possible. I can't draw it with a ruler on the screen. Okay? Now let me change the color to help you see the next ray. You will see the ray going back this way. See, when you cannot uh, extend to meet the two ray on the right hand side, you always extend the ray backward to meet on the left hand side. Uh, my, sorry, uh, my ray appears to be sl slanted a bit. Let me correct it. It should look straight. It should look straight. Huh? Okay, I, I've tried to draw as straight as I can. So, this is where you form the image. It is a virtual image. Remember, virtual image is formed in the case of a magnifying glass. Okay, so you get a virtual image, which means the answer come out already is either B or C. It's a virtual image. Okay, virtual upright. And virtual. Okay? Virtual. It's either B or C. 
Now, what do you think the focal length will be? Remember, for virtual image, back in our notes, for virtual image, uh, this last case here, virtual image is only formed, virtual image is only formed when the object is within the focal length, which means the focal length is longer than the object distance. It must be longer than object distance because the object must fall within the focal length, then you will get this kind of virtual image. All right? So back to the back to the uh, the question, which means if my object is 10 cm, then my f most likely my f is here, about here, where whereby my focal length is longer than the object distance. So then I can say the object is fall within the focal length. So my focal length must be greater than 10 cm, which means the answer is D. So that's why this question is one level higher. And it's important. You can mark a star. Nowadays, sometimes MCQ makes you think quite a bit. Huh? All right? Now, the rest of the question, please do during your, uh, your holiday. During your holiday now, you can try the rest of the question. Two, three, four, right? Six, seven, eight, nine. And then this few. Please try this few yourself. Number 10A. Number 10B. Drawing backward. Number ten, ah, 11 is a good one. And I will help you recap number 18 too. Okay? Number 18. In fact, please try, yeah, please try uh, 18A, not B, yeah? 18A. Okay? Try all this during your holiday. I can, I can do it. I can uh, review this with you when school reopen as a recap, as a recap on where we left off this year. So I will see you again next year. Your holiday assignment, I will WhatsApp you uh, to show you what to do in your 10-year series. So no hurry, I will text you. Just please pay attention to the WhatsApp I give you in the class chat group. Uh, with this, I'm going to end the lesson here. Thank you. Okay? Thank you.